I have lots of great exciting news for you today, as well as a few really bad ones, sadly. The type you should be aware of in order to protect yourself. Well, let's get started. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. This week has been intense way too intense. We first had a new content roadmap for 2021, which I gladly reviewed in great detail. Then we had the Reddit AMA event where players posted 76 questions and then Bethesda devs answered in real time. I also covered the highlights in a recent video, in case you missed it. But in this video, I'm going over the latest news and discoveries in the wasteland. I will start with the PTS hotfix, and then I will move to the pennant. We now know how it looks like. Then I will move to some really bad news regarding a possible steel hack, as well as the player vendor bug. I highly recommend you to watch these two topics for safety reasons. Anyway, I have a lot more stuff to share, especially related to upcoming items, so without any further delays, let's crack right into it. This past Wednesday, March 24, Bethesda released a new hotfix for the public test server, which includes only bug fixes and improvements. And as you can see, most of them address new issues which emerged from the latest new features for update 26, such as camp slots and the new daily ops expansion features. There is no new content added with this patch, in case you were wondering. Now, while most of the patch notes can't really be tested, I can assure you there's still plenty to fix. And don't get me wrong, I'm really glad they have released over 20 bug fixes, but the PTS forums are filled with reports on new bugs only. So what I'm trying to say is that they still have a long way to go if they want to somewhat optimize this upcoming patch. For starters, the melee system got a major bug fixed, where player melee hits were only afflicting damage to the limb condition. By the way, the melee system got improved big time. You no longer miss half your hits anymore. It's not perfect, that's for sure. You will miss here and there still, but it's day and night compared to the official servers. Now, some players have reported that certain perks and legendary effects are still not fully operational, even after the hotfix. And I can totally vouch for this statement since some of my perks are still quite buggy. For instance, my rank 3 dodgy perk does not work. Nothing. It doesn't trigger. It hasn't worked ever since the PTS went live though, so it's not exactly new. It just means it's not fixed yet. It's completely broken on my end. Then we have Ricochet. It does dodge damage, but the deflected hits are not working with certain effects, like Vampire. It only heals you once per target, even if you trigger Ricochet multiple times on that same target. There's also a huge issue with the crafting bars, which sometimes cause your crafted items to do not count towards mission objectives or challenge goals. Talking about crafting, there is also this persistent bug now where players are often getting frozen after exiting a crafting bench. The only way to get past this is by fast traveling, so it's a really frustrating bug. Moving forward, there are a few camp bugs which are quite concerning too, such as placed items duplicating themselves. In here, I logged in to find out that all my outdoors items had been duped and placed into my building mode stored category. It's weird because all the items inside my Brotherhood Towers were not duplicated, only the ones directly placed on the ground. Very, very strange. Well, these are only a few examples, as you can imagine, there are many more issues to be fixed, so let's all hope for more hotfixes before patch 26 hits the official servers. Since we are talking about the public test server, there are news on how the next and third pennant will look like. That's right. A few weeks ago, Bethesda announced that there will be a new pennant reward for players who play at least one hour during three different days on the public test server. That's the only requirement. Meanwhile, data miners discovered a new pennant in the game files, which is most likely going to be the third one. It's not a vault boy or girl this time, it's actually a super mutant. A very cute one. It's a joyful green cartoon with orange letters and borders. 
Well then, I think this is a great idea and it will allow Bethesda to come up with so many other pennant variations in the future by simply drawing cartoons of existing enemies. Let's move away from the PTS now and focus on something quite concerning, the ongoing vendor bug. I know some of you guys are very skeptical about the existing of this bug, but with dozens and dozens of reports every month, I find it hard to believe it doesn't exist. First, because this is a very old issue and Bethesda even disabled player vendors for a while when they were trying to fix one of the major bugs back then. Remember when players could sometimes loot random stashed items from drinking bowls, for example? Yeah, that was really, really bad. Anyway, the ongoing bug is also about pulling random stash items into the player vendor. It can select any item in your stash and add it for sale, normally for one cap or no price at all, just like the footage you can see here. Recently, I also found the 44 ammo for sale on my mains vendor with my alt. I'm fairly sure I did not place it there, so I'm 100% convinced this bug does exist. It may not happen very often, but when or if it does, it could cause a lot of damage. It just has to select an item with a lot of value and then it's gone. Who wouldn't buy a bloodied explosive weapon for one cap, for example? Anyhow, I saw over a dozen of other reports on the same Reddit post where players claim to have seen this bug or suffered from it in the past. It's pretty scary and the best solution is to simply disable or remove your vendor machines altogether. It's the only way to ensure this bug will never happen to you. Something else you can do which may or may not help is to move all your stash boxes away from the vendors since they might be responsible for triggering this bug as well. It was a highly discussed topic last year so better safer than sorry. Meanwhile all we can do is wait and hope Bethesda will come up with a solution. Now I think that dividing the vendor stash from the normal stash would probably be the easiest and most effective solution but who knows, maybe there's something else they could do to prevent this bug from ever happening again. How long will it take though, we don't know, so let's sit tight and, well, protect ourselves in the best way possible. Sadly, the next news is not anything pleasant either. It's something I couldn't get confirmation, but if it's actually true, it's something you guys should be aware of. Rumors state there is a new hack in town for inventory stealing. In the past week, I received three reports about the existing of such a hack, and they were all from different people. One of them actually came from one of my mods, so I'm not so skeptical anymore. Thankfully, people using such hardcore hacks are not very common, so it's unlikely this may end up happening to you, but either way, just in case, there is a way to protect yourself and ensure you won't fall victim to this sort of hacks. Supposedly, one of the requirements for this hack to fully work is to enter into trading mode with the hacker, so make sure not to directly trade with anyone you don't know. Anyway, I cannot confirm this exists, right now it's just a rumor, but if it does exist, it's really bad and you shouldn't give it any chances really. Plus, judging on how we had the steel hack issue in the past, the chances for this one to be real are not so low. As such, better safer than sorry. Enough of bad news for now, let's move to some free gifts. The Dead Claw or Easter Eggs are now live once again since the past Tuesday. That's right, but as they re-added this small surprise which first went live on the 2019 Easter, but it was completely left aside in 2020. Now we are able to unlock the existing six Easter eggs once again, as the community manager Lady Devon confirmed over Reddit. A new egg will go live for free through the Atomic Shop every other day, so make sure to keep an eye on any free pop-ups. But there's a catch here, the most recent egg doesn't always get added to the special stab, so make sure to head to the camp category and then to decoration, that's where the eggs are placed, thus where you can claim them for free. Remember, if you grab all the six easter eggs, you will also unlock another free reward, the bunny mask. You can find the bunny mask as a craftable entry at any armor bench when it's unlocked. Alright, happy hag hunting and let's move to the next point. 
I almost forgot about this weekend's community event, maybe you did too. The treasure hunters are back for a few more days until March 29. It's the very last event on the ongoing community roadmap, so expect a new one to be released next week. I'm fairly sure the next Inside the Vault article will be all about that. Anyway, just to keep you informed, there are no new rewards for this edition of the Treasure Hunters. Not yet, at least. On the PTS, there are 5 new rewards already, so once Update 26 goes live, you will have a few more rare rewards to farm for once you see these cute creatures roaming around. I still think it's a pity to kill them, they don't even fight back. But oh well, it is what it is. As you probably heard by now, there is a new interactive item on the way to the Atomic Shop. It's called the Fortune Teller and this item has two features attached to it. First of all, it will really foretell your future through random notes. There are 55 possible combinations, so I think there is plenty to explore here. But there's more. By interacting with this item, you can also receive a plus to luck boost for 30 minutes. Pretty handy, huh? Moreover, curious fact, the early version of this item had an older man behind the counter with white hair and beard. The final version got changed to a younger man with black hair and darker skin. It's still unknown how much this item will cost, but I would say at least 500 atoms. It's a pretty complex one, after all. Something else that caught my eye was the discovery of several mailbox skins, which seem to be atomic shop entries. So we are definitely getting mailboxes sooner rather than later. There's a red and white skin on a standard wooden pole, as well as a chicken or rooster skin in white, and even a fish skin, where the mailbox opening is the fish's mouth. It is a very clever, practical joke, I can tell you that much. Anyhow, it's curious that they only decided to go forward with this idea now, because mailboxes have always been part of Fallout 76 since the very early days. You can find them in every town, basically. But in the end, it's better late than ever, right? So bring it on! The Nuka Cola Collectron is a new upcoming item coming with Season 4 called Steel, but when the scoreboard was first released in the public test server, very little was known about this upcoming item, until recently. After all, there was no preview image and there are hardly any details on the item description, but hold your horses. Bethesda has recently added some images there, where it shows the head is not the typical circle, it's actually made of half a Nuka Cola machine. It's a very interesting design, I must admit. What about the scavenge pool? Well, the data miner Garrowist has already shared such details. The Nuka Cola Collectron will be able to find all types of Nuka Colas well, the existing ones, that is, including empty Nuka-Cola bottles. So if you are a huge Nuka-Cola fan, you surely won't want to miss this one. In one of my recent news, I talked about how Bethesda has added dozens and dozens of new map markers to the game files. Now, data miners found even more markers, it's quite suspicious. Why is Bethesda investing time in making or adding so many icons or markers with no current use? Besides the upcoming nuke markers for the alert public system, we are also getting new location markers, which hints towards existing unmarked locations such as the guidestones. There are also these yellow markers, most of them indicate transport ways, factions or actions. It's like some sort of new marker marker system where players can indicate what they see, like a footprint, a briefcase, a scent, a terminal, and the list goes on. All I can think of is the upcoming expedition system. There is even a drop zone icon, but we are still so far off, it's too early to tell. What do you guys think about these icons though? What are they for? Next, I have two new data mine emotes to show you. Yeah, the unused list is getting really long at this point. First, we have this sort of group party emote, very similar to the other group emotes we already have live. It looks like a birthday sort of party though, from the hats and everything, but anyway, there is a second emote which will allow players to express how they like another player's camp. 
It has been a highly requested emote over the past year or so, and it's great to see Bethesda finally listening to community feedback here, even if it's just about an emote. At least it's an emote a lot of people have requested and have been waiting for a very long time. Alright, as one of the last news I want to talk about something I faced yesterday, I ended up in a server where the enemy loot was insane. I felt no lag at all while moving or killing enemies, but when it came to legendary loot from enemies, it was taking over a minute to load. I had never seen such a high waiting time before. I even thought this queen got bugged for a bit there, but nope. The loot eventually loaded, but it took so long. It happened the same with his legendary Scorch Beast, but no legendary enemies were loading just fine, almost instantly. This could be a new bug, or it could be, you know, just bad servers, I'm not entirely sure. But just be aware of this, because if you leave thinking there is no loot, you got bugged or something alike, you will definitely miss it. Sometimes you just have to wait, even if there is no loading icon like it happened to me here. If I had left, I would never know the loot would appear right in front of my eyes one minute later. So keep this little detail in mind whenever your loot is not loading, because you might get it in the end. I'm just trying to help here. Okay, to finish off, I have another bug. Yeah, another one. This time, it's a very strange and weird bug. I had no idea it existed until yesterday when a friend asked me about if I knew anything about it. But he's not alone. Some have been experiencing this bug as well, where their screens get filled with red exclamation points as shown in the screenshots. According to the dataminer DSG, this is a rendering error and it happens when certain assets got corrupted or removed from your BA2 file. This could happen if you use shady mods or try to edit the BA file yourself. If you experience something alike, you should repair your game or even do a clean install to ensure your files are all intact and operational once again. Right into the outro, I have one of the strangest bugs to show you. I tried to fast travel to my friend here and the game instantly sent me to the main menu. My other two teammates also got kicked from the team. Should I say, it's magic. I know public teams have a lot of bugs, but damn, that's hardcore. Anyway, I joined back into the same server and the same team. I tried to fast travel to him once again, and then my screen went black with no sound. Uh, okay then, I think there is only one thing to conclude here. Fast traveling to Mad Dog Rot is no longer safe. He unlocked the ability to launch bugs at other players, and that's probably the deadliest skill in 76. Uh, what am I saying here? Oh my, what else to do but look at the bright side of things, right? I, I don't know what triggered that, but it's surely something Bethesda needs to look into. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope I could keep you up to date with everything Fallout 76. I am Marty Branco. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want more like this. And as usual, a huge thanks to all my lovely supporters. You guys are the best. As for me, I will see you very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!